Okay, welcome to SAT 3310. This is scripting for administration and automation. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, working with files and for all of our lectures we're really going to go in the, the sequence of Perl, then Python, then Bash, and then PowerShell. So we'll start with working with files and Perl. So what I want to talk about is, is just some general ideas. Um, again, I, I really want to emphasize this point. When you're writing scripts in Perl, I really want to emphasize the, the importance of using comments and um, being very descriptive. Not the least of which is making a comment header block where you're talking about your class, lab number, your email, the date, and then a short description of what that script's going to do. So you can see here's an example uh, script and I've sort of made this into like a template. So I, you can see it starts out with my shebang user bin Perl and then I've got uh, my header block where I'm talking about you know what it is, who I am, um, short description. And then I even have uh, some uh, sections there where I define, well, here's the variables here's the main portion of the script, here's where I'm going to open files, here's where I'm going to count words, that sort of thing. So I really recommend this idea of using a, a template. Uh, so now talking about Perl, I want to talk about this idea of um, just the, the scalar data in Perl. We're talking about things like numbers or strings, and a string is just you know any sequence of characters uh, if you use uh, a single quoted string in Perl, this is going to be our literal. So it's if you want to do something where um, you want to evaluate what's inside the script, you're not going to use a literal. The literal is going to put exactly what's inside the, the single tick quotations. It's hard using single tick quotations if you want to also have a single tick in there. Um, you can see you have to escape out other single ticks by using the backslash to escape that out. So in the case of don't, you'd need a, a backslash single tick to, to get that quote in there. Um, double quoted literals is now where um, you can backslash four special characters. So you have a, like a say a new line or a, a tab, um, which are very convenient. You can also backslash out for Unicode characters. So using a double quote is probably the more common method of, of using strings in Perl. Uh, some fun things you can do with strings is you can concatenate strings. So if you want, uh, say, to add hello and world together, you could print these out to the screen. Um, you can also mix and match your, your literals uh, with your single and double tick quotations. So you see I've got hello plus a space plus world plus a new line character. Uh, you can do things where you can repeat strings. So in this case, I'm repeating T-O-R-N-E three times. And uh, the other nice thing is with the double quote, you can actually do automatic configuration or I'm sorry, automatic conversion. So the string of 12, which are the characters one and two, and the character three, uh, Perl will actually convert that out, which is kind of nice. Um, so here's some more uh, ideas with, with using variables in Perl. Um, depending on what style guide uh, you wanna go with, do you wanna use all lowercase? Do you wanna use all uppercase? Do you want to use underscores or mixed case? It, it really depends. Um, different style guides will teach you different ways. I'm not concerned so much about the style itself. Uh, I'm most concerned with that you just be consistent. So for example, if you want to say all the, the lowercase strings are user defined and um, if it's all uppercase, that's going to be a special string, or you're going to use all mixed case. Uh, again, just be consistent. 
Uh, so here's some examples of variable assignments. So I'm setting a uh, name, um, some number variables there. Um, I, again, I'm setting a, a string to, to equal uh, auto conversion. And uh, you can see then down at the bottom, I'm adding a new line character to uh, some, some strings. Uh, a nice shortcut in Perl, you can see the very last one, the my name dot equals is just uh, the same as saying my name equals my name plus a new line character. So it's just a kind of a shortcut notation there. When we're looking at just some really basic output with Perl, uh, you can really use the just the print command. So you can see I want to print hello world in a new line. Um, I want to print the answer is with no new line. And um, then on the same line, I'll print a numeric calculation and then, and then print the new line. Or I could combine those all in one. So I could say the answer is comma, the math, and then a comma, and then a new line. Um, you could also use the dot character to concatenate. Uh, so a lot of different uh, flexibility, a lot of different methods that you can use with some basic output there. If you want something a little more fancy, you can use the print formatted or print F with Perl. So print F, you can say um, hello there and use the percent sign. In this case, I'm saying percent string for characters and then a percent D for decimal. So you're saying print formatted double quote, string decimal, new line, double quote, and then actually provide the string and the decimal. So that's a, a ni nice way of um, doing a formatted print to make your output look nice. Another thing you can use instead of print or print formatted is the say Perl command. And say will automatically add a new line, so you don't have to try to remember using that um, backslash n all the time. So print uh, hello new line or print hello and then plus a new line is equivalent to just say hello. So that's a that's a handy shortcut for you to be able to use. Um, I also I want to start now talking a little bit about um, control control structures. So we're, we're going to be talking about um, if then uh, while for each. So let me let me talk a little bit just about the if control structure. So we're saying in this case if and you want to test then you want to do something. So in the Perl syntax it's if parentheses test and then a curly brace for your block of code. So for example if um, testing a variable for a numeric value start the block of code, print out some output. Some comparison operators that you should be aware of. Um, this is for your if uh, testing. Uh, if you're going to be using um, variable, if, you, if you're going to be using um, numbers, you use the equals, not equals, greater than, less than, uh, that sort of thing if you're using numbers. If you're going to be using words, you're going to need to use uh, EQ not or for equal, NE for not equal, uh, and so on. So again, you, you need to just be aware, are you comparing numbers or are you comparing string variables? Uh, a, a Boolean is not a formalized Perl type, but if you're familiar with programming, it's just basically uh, a Boolean is a zero and a one sort of thing. Um, but what you can do is you can sort of fake a Boolean variable type for your if uh, statements. So you could say, um, you know, if, if you want to use a number Boolean, zero is false and then anything else is true. And a string Boolean is if it's not, if the string hasn't been equal to anything, then it's false. If it's the string has been set to anything, then it's true. So you can use that in this sense where if string done, so if it was, if, if the variable done was set to anything, 
then the block of code that it would execute would be you're you're done. Um, so this is just a, a simple way of doing a, a Perl boolean. I want to talk about while control structures. So while is different than the if in the sense that while whatever is in the testing is true, it will continue to execute that block of code. So you can see in this case, I'm saying while, and the test is count less than 10, um, do, do some block of code. Now just remember to increment, in this case, the, the count variable, because otherwise it'll never escape, it'll never end that while loop. Last control structure I sort of want to talk about a little bit is the for each. Um, I like the for each because uh, you can do fun things like for each item in list, do some block of code. So in this example, I'm saying for each variable in that list of variables, do that block of code. So you could see in this example, it would go and print for each rock in the different list or the, the list of different rocks, it would print that rock. So you don't need to know how long that list is. Um, you can continue to add items to the list and it'll go through and automatically parse out that list and, and cycle through it. So the for each is a, is a very nice control structure.